All praises to the Most High. Happy Sabbath to you all. Uh, tonight's topic is called the parables of wisdom. The parables of wisdom. Okay, so let's open up. Let's open up with the book of Psalms 111 and 10. Let's, let's open up with that. Psalms 111 and 10, let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. So the Lord's praise endures forever. So, but what, what um, King David is teaching us, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you want to get wisdom, the first thing that we must do is to fear the most High God. That's the first step to get the wisdom of the Lord. We must fear him. We must fear his judgments. You understand? Get that in Psalms 119 verse 120. Psalms 119 verse 120. So we understand. What does it mean to fear the Lord? What do we fear? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 120. Go ahead. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. Mm -hmm. And I am afraid of thy judgment. You see that? He says, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I'm afraid of thy judgment. So the fear that we have is the fear that is the fear that the most high will judge us when we go the hell off. When we do things contrary to the scriptures, listen. The most high God is going to bring hell on earth on us. Why? Because he's teaching us here, listen, what we fear is the Lord's judgment. You understand? So go back to Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. A good the fear, the fear, the fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hold that. Give me Proverbs 1. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Read that again. The book, the book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Go ahead. But, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So now... We read in the book of Psalms of David. Now we're reading in Proverbs, King, King David's son, King Solomon. He's saying the same thing. He says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What is the knowledge? Wisdom and instruction. That's what it, King Solomon is telling us here. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sarah 2. Sarah chapter 2, verse 15. Okay. Let's understand the fear of the Lord. Okay. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 15. Read. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. You see that? They that fear the Lord will not, will not, will not disobey his word. So if you fear God, we are not going to disobey his laws, statutes, and commandments that he, what, that he gave unto us. Read that again, verse 15. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 15. Mm hmm they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Read. And they that love him will keep his ways. You see that? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. That's the same thing we read. You understand? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He says, they that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. So if you say you fear the Lord, it means you are obeying his word. Okay? And they that love him will keep his ways meaning all the ways that he gave unto us. Next verse, come on. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. You see what he's saying? So if you fear the Lord, you're going to seek the things that are pleasing unto the Most High. Get that in Isaiah 42, 21. Let's see what is well-pleasing to the Most High. He says, when we fear the Lord, we're going to seek the things that please him. Okay, Isaiah 42, 21. Read that. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 42, verse 21. Go ahead. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. You see that? The Lord is well pleased, well pleased for his righteousness sake. Come on. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Because when Christ walked the earth, guess what he did? 
he magnified the law and he made it honorable because he honored it. You understand? So we must walk after his footsteps. So they that fear the Lord, they that, they that, they, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Let's get righteousness. Get that in Luke 1. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Let's see. They that fear the Lord will do those things that are well pleasing unto him. Okay? Let's get that in Luke 1. Luke chapter 1. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Go ahead. And they were both righteous before God. Mm -hmm. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. You see that? That's what it means to be righteous before God. What does this mean? It means to do things that are well pleasing unto him. We keep his commandments and his ordinances blameless. That's what he's saying right there. So we need to understand that. Okay, so go back. Go back to Sarah 2. Read verse 16 again. of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. You see that? The things that are well-pleasing unto the Lord is what? His righteousness. That when we do his word, we please the Lord. Go ahead. And they that love him shall be filled with the Lord. You see that? So he's explaining what it means to love him. Go back up to verse 15. Read verse 15 again. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Right. And they that love him will keep his ways. You see that? They that love him will keep his ways. He's going to tell you what those ways are. Verse, six, verse 16. Come on. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see what the word his ways are? His ways are his laws. The rag is letting you know right here. Verse 15, it says, they that love him will be, will what? Will keep his ways. Verse 16 is saying what? It says, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. That's the ways he's talking about. You understand? That is the ways that I did. Go ahead. Verse 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts mm -hmm. and humble their souls in his sight. You see what he's saying? And they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts, meaning what? You will examine yourself to see if your life is contrary to the Most High God's ways or it's lining up. If it's not lining up, guess what? You are not doing the things that are well-pleasing unto him. That means the Lord is not well-pleased with you. When what? When you don't do what is written. And guess what? We need to work harder to what? To show the Lord that we really we mean business. We love his law, statutes, and commandments, and we have joy doing them. Guess what? The Lord will be well pleased. Read verse 17 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 17. Read. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts mm. and humble their souls in his sight. And humble their souls in the most high God's sight. So we must prepare our hearts. You understand? Get that in Sarah 2. Read verse 1. We must prepare our hearts. All right. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see that? That's what it means to prepare your heart. You prepare your soul for temptation. You prepare for the trials that are to come. So before those trials are, are at your doorstep, your, all our jobs is to do what? is to prepare our hearts and minds and our souls so we may be able to stand in the day of evil. Okay? Hold this. Give me Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 6. Watch what the Apostle Paul said here. It says something heavy. Okay, this is a heavy thing. Pay attention. Ephesians chapter 6. Read verse... Hmm, let's start at verse 13. Watch this. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 13. Come on. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. We must do what? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So we are being commanded to take the whole armor of God. Hold that. Get that in Romans chapter 13. Let's see what is the armor of the Lord. Okay. He says, we must take unto us the whole armor. Read Romans 13, verse 12. Of Romans chapter 13 is 12. Go ahead. The night is far spent. 
Mm -hmm. The day is at hand. Read. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. What, what must we do? Let us put on the armor of light. We are com being commanded here to put on the armor of light. Let's see what is the armor of light. Read verse 14. Come on. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. What must we do? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jump back up to verse 12. Read that last part. Let us what? And let us put on the armor of light. Jump down to verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the armor of light. Jesus the Christ, he's the armor of light. He's our armor because he comes in the volume of the book. Hold that. Get that in Psalms 40, okay? Psalms chapter 40 right there. Psalms 40 verse 7. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You see what he's saying? This is Christ speaking through King David. He says, listen, I come in the volume of the book. The whole book is about me. That's what Christ is telling us. The whole book is about him. So he's saying what? Read that again, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. He says he comes in the volume of the book. It is written of him. So now, let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians 6, verse 13. Okay. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 13. Come on. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That's Christ. The whole armor of God is Jesus the Christ. Guess what? He comes in the volume of the book. So what is the Apostle Paul saying? Learn the whole Bible. Read the whole Bible. That's what he's saying. Because that's how you're going to what? Put on the armor of the Most High God. Go ahead. That ye may be able to stand in, to stand in the evil day. You see that? The whole point of putting the armor on is that we may be able to stand in what? In the evil day. The day of the Lord's return, you understand? Or the day of your trial. That's the evil day. He says that you may be able to stand withstand in the evil day. Go ahead. And having done all to stand. Having done all the commandments in order for you to stand against the evil day. You see that? That's what he's saying right there. That's what he's saying. Now, go back to Sarah 2. Read verse 16. One more again. Verse 17, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 17. Go ahead. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts mm. and humble their souls in his sight. You see that? And humble their souls in his sight. He says, they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts. They will prepare their soul for temptation and humble their souls in his sight. We fast, we pray, we apply the scriptures, we study. That's how we what? That's how we humble our souls before the Most High. We must be about His business. So guess what? For us to understand these these parables that are written in this book, the first thing that we must be in love with, in love with, we must be in love with the wisdom of the Lord. We must be in love with the things that are written in this book because they are for our benefit and are for our learning. You understand? So that's what the Lord is telling us right there to do. Okay. Watch this. Give me. Give me that book of Psalms, 119. What our forefather King David said, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalms 119, I might be verse 18 somewhere. There. Let's, let's, let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 18. Come on. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see what he's saying? Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So guess what? The wondrous things is the parables, the dark saying, the mysteries, you understand, the prophecies. Those are the wondrous things and the things that the Lord had done. But guess what? Our eyes must be opened. Our spiritual eyes must be opened. You understand? That, that we may be able to see these wondrous things. And the gateway to get the wondrous things, we must what? We must be swimming in the laws of God. That's what he's saying. He's giving us the key. This is the key to the kingdom right here. Understand that. Now, 
Give me Matthew 13 and 1. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Let's read that thing right there. Okay. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. Go ahead. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Okay, so now um, Christ is going to go over the parables with who? With the disciples. Okay, go ahead. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. The whole multitude that followed him, that was receiving his teaching, he says, they what? The whole multitude stood and on the shore. Watch this, go ahead. And he spake many things unto them in parables, mm -hmm. saying, Behold, a All... sower went forth to sow. Okay, read that again, verse 3, come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 3. Go ahead. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So when he says a sower, he's talking about himself and what the disciples will do later on when he's gone. Jump down to verse 10, come on. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? You see what they're asking? He says, Why are you talking to these people that the multitude that are following? Why are you talking to them in parables? You understand? Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. You see what he's saying? He says, it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, the multitude that are following, because why? They did not believe many of them. He says, but to you disciples, it is given. The mysteries of the kingdom of God is given unto you. That's what he's saying. The parables to unlock them. Get that in John 16, verse 25. John 16, verse 25. Because Christ said something here. Watch this. John chapter 16, verse 25. Go ahead. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. In what? These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. In Proverbs, in Proverbs, in parables, allegories, and dark sayings. Go ahead. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. You see what he's saying? So that's a heavy statement he's making. He says, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. Meaning what? When he returns, when he's going to teach us again, and now when he's using the teachers to do what? To open the understanding up so we understand what's going on. What do we need to do for us to get delivered? You understand? Jump down to verse 29. Read. Verse 29. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. You see what he's saying? They, right then and there, they say, listen, we want you to speak to us plainly. Don't use parables when you're among us. We want to understand what you're saying. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 30. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. You see what they are telling them? They are telling him, he says, now we are sure that thou knowest all things. We sure that we, you know all things. And need is not that any man should ask thee. You understand? Nobody should be asking you. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. We believe this because what? You come from the most high God. That's what he's saying right here. Okay, go ahead. Jesus answered them. Do ye now believe? Do you know believe? Do you believe now? Go ahead, watch this. Because he's asking them a rhetorical question. Remember, they didn't believe many of them. Nor do they understand the things he was saying. You understand? Because why? He needed to die and resurrect and give them the Holy Ghost after he's gone, where the spirit will be opened now fully. Go ahead. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, mm. and shall leave me alone. Mm, come on. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. You see what he's saying? So he's saying some heavy says, Behold, the hour cometh here is now come. 
that ye shall be scattered because guess what? There are those that ran. John was the only one that was there by, by Christ's side. You understand? Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone because the father is with me. Now that's a hard saying. Heavy stuff. Hold this. Get that in Job 11 verse 6. Watch this. Job chapter 11 and verse 6. Let's get there. What, what is Christ saying right here? Read that for me. Job 11, verse 6. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. Stop right there. That he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. That's the same thing that King David said. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Go ahead. That they are double to that which is. You see that? So the secrets of wisdom, they are double in how they are written. There's more than one, more than two, more than three meanings. You understand? There's a couple of layers. You can watch this. Go back to where he was at now. John chapter 16. Read verse 32 again. Oh, John chapter 16, verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be scattered, you every shall be man to his own. Hold on. Read that again, verse 32. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 32. Read. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Ye shall be what? That ye shall be scattered. You see what he's saying is, is that hour is the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. You disciples and the multitude that are you are going to be scattered. You understand? Hold this. Get that in, get that into Deuteronomy 4. Get Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Watch this. It's a heavy thing, what Christ is saying. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And the Lord shall, shall do you. what? And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Slavery, colonization, and forced migration. Right here is telling them about 70 AD. You understand? He's talking about 70 AD. He's prophesying about that. Not only that, but he's also telling them, listen, the hour has come where I need to fulfill what was written of me, that I need to fulfill that was written of me by the prophets. That's what he's also saying. Read that again, Deuteronomy 4, 27. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 27. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be left few in number among the heathen. Read. Whither the Lord shall lead you. You see what he's saying? The Lord will scatter us among the nations. Deuteronomy 32 verse 26. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 32 verse 26. Read. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I will do what? I would scatter them into corners. I'm going to scatter them into corners. Come on. I would make. Read that again, because you're on mute now. The remembrance of them to cease from among men. You see what he's saying? It says, I will scatter them into corners. I would scatter them into corners and will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So Christ is prophesying what's going to happen, what's going to happen to us after it's from 70, 70 AD on up that we are going to be scattered among all nations on earth as slaves. Now watch this. Give me the book of, give me the book of Nehemiah. The reason why we would be scattered all over the earth is because of this. Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1, read verse 8. You know what? Start of verse 7. We're going to read down. Watch this. Read. Of Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 7. Uh -huh. We have dealt very corruptly against thee. Mm -hmm. And have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. You see what Nehemiah is saying? He says, we've done, we've dealt corruptly against the Lord. We've done that. How? We broke the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. And you understand? Go ahead. Verse 8. Watch this. Remember, I beseech thee, mm -hmm. the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. What You see what he's saying? Read that verse again, verse 8. Come on. Book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, say, if ye transgress, if you I do what? To you. If ye transgress, if you transgress, if you break God's laws, what's going to happen? I will scatter you abroad among the nations. He says, I'm going to scatter you abroad among all these nations that hate and despise us. Let's go back to John 16, okay? John chapter 16. Read verse 32 one more again. The book of John chapter 16, verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Mm -hmm. Every man to his own. Every man to his own, meaning what? We're going to be scattered among all nations on earth. And guess what? We're going to start to call those lands that we are scattered our homelands. Go ahead. And shall leave me alone. We're going to leave him alone, meaning what? We're not going to be with him anymore. You understand? Because what, we, what is he going to do? Get that in Acts 1 and 9 real quick. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. You know what? Hmm. Okay, let me just read this, but we're going to read it again later on. Get that in Luke 19, okay? Luke 19, and verse, read verse 12. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 12. Go ahead. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. You see that? So the nobleman is talking about himself. He's the nobleman. This is Christ speaking. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. You understand? Acts 1 and 9. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things, while mm -hmm. the hell, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. You see that? And a cloud received him out of their sight. Why? Because that's when he went to get himself when he went to a far country this is the where the most high god is went back to the father he went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return so read that again x1 and 9 come on the book of x of the one verse 9 mm -hmm. and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight the cloud is the chariot read verse 11 now watch this he was taken up by the chariot, went back to the Father. Come on. Verse 11. Hold on. Wait, wait. Get that in Hebrews 1. Real quick. Hebrews chapter 1. Okay. Read verse 3. The book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Come on. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins. You see that? Pur purged our sins. That's when he died for us. Go ahead. Read. Set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He sat down on the right hand of the most high God. He went up to a far country to receive a kingdom for what? To receive a kingdom for himself. You see that? Now, go back to Acts now. Read chapter 1 verse 11 now. Acts 1 11, he says, he went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He went up there. To the, he went back to the Father. He's sitting on the right hand of the Most High God. Now he's coming back. So before he arrives, we must prepare ourselves before his arrival. Okay, read that. Acts 1 verse 11. Come on. The book of Acts 1 verse 11. Read. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up unto heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. You see what he's saying? Is that the same way he was taken up, that's how he's going to come down with a chariot. That's what he's saying right there. Get that in Matthew. Okay. Matthew chapter 24, read verse 29. Watch this. Because remember, we're waiting for the Lord to return. But before the Lord returns, we need to get it together. The Lord will send the Elijah to teach us all things in these last days. So we remember who we are. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. Now, this go the tribulation is slavery. 
The tribulation is slavery. Okay, hold this. Give me the book. Give me the book of, um, Ro give me Revelation chapter 7. Um, Revelation chapter 7. Um, read verse, verse 14. Watch this. I'm just going to get to the point on this. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Mm. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they. He's talking about Israel now. He's talking about us coming back, returning back to the Mosa, returning back to Jerusalem, our homeland. He says, Who are the who are he says what? Um, he says, and said unto him, Thou knowest. Because he was asking, who are these people? Read verse 13 just so we can get it. The book, the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? We, what are these which are arrayed in white robes? That's what you read about in 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, verse 42 down. Read. And whence come they? Where do they come from? Read. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Say, you know, you know. Go ahead. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. You see then? That's the, the same tribulation that John the Revelator is explaining is the same tribulation that Christ is explaining in Matthew 24. Go ahead. And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You see that? We washed our robes, meaning we got ourselves together. We were not those foolish versions. We were those wise versions that had their lamps. They had oil in their lamps. They had understanding of the scriptures, so they apply the scriptures, you understand, to get their minds right. Now, get that in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, read verse 27. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 27. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Mm -hmm. And he shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whither the Lord shall lead you. The few in number is because the nations will destroy us. They'll be killing us, lynching, raping, robbery, all of that. Okay, go in the lands of our captivity. Right? And there ye shall serve gods. Mm -hmm. The work of men's hands. Wood and stone. So the wood is Islam, the second most biggest religion on earth. That's Islam. Okay, go ahead. Wood and what? No, wood no, no. And stone. Wood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wood, wood is Christianity. The number one demonic religion on earth. That's Christianity. Followed by Islam. The second largest religious religion on earth that black men now they think Muslim, being a Muslim is a black man's religion. But they because they don't know their history. Okay, go ahead. Wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Watch this. Now, we are in the lens of our captivity because what? Christ is yet to return. But he went to get and receive a kingdom for himself, you understand, and to return. So while he's getting himself, while he's waiting for Israel to get it together, as we are doing now, guess what? We would be in slavery. We would be in captivity. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. But if from thence thou shalt seek that part right there, but if from thence where you are scattered in these last days in those foreign lands, guess what? What this is what will take place. Go ahead. Thou shalt seek the Lord thy God. Thou shalt find him. We're gonna seek the Lord, we're gonna find him. How? The prophets will be on the streets bringing the truth out. Go ahead. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Meaning what? We mustn't be double-minded on this wise. Go ahead. When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in what? When thou art in tribulation. When you are in tribulation, great tribulation, John the Revelator said. You understand? Hard bondage that we read about in Daniel. I mean in Isaiah 14. He is saying when thou art in tribulation, slavery, colonization, forced migration, apartheid, Shabbil massacre, Marikana massacre, Jim Crow, so on and so forth, Silk Road slave trade, sub sahara slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade. Guess what? That's the tribulation we would find ourselves in. He's going to even tell you the timeline. Read. 
and all these things are come upon thee. The things that will come upon us is what we is what is the things that Moses taught us they will take place. Right? Even in the latter days. That's the key right there. Even in the latter days. What does he talk about? The last days. So that's what Christ was talking about in Matthew 24. You understand? That's what he was making reference to in John 16, verse 32. Go ahead. If thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. You see that? And be obedient unto his voice, which is his laws. Go back to Matthew 24. Read verse 29 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29. Read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Shall the sun be darkened? What is he talking about? War. War. The sun is going to be darkened in the tri after the tribulation of those days. Which days? The days that we as the nation will be in slavery. You understand? It says then the sun will be darkened because there's going to be war that will pop off. Hmm. Hold this. Give me that in Second Ezra. Watch this. Second Ezra. Okay. Second Ezra. Um, I'm just going to get to the point. Second Ezra chapter 15. Okay. Second Ezra chapter 15. Read verse 20. Second book of Ezra chapter 15 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. You see that? So when it says the sun is going to be darkened, before the sun is darkened, the most I well is moving the spirits of these nations. Look at Russia, what he's doing. You understand? Russia is, 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 is has invaded Ukraine. Now they've taken hold of the nuclear power plant in Ukraine. Now US is getting involved. Now China's getting involved. Now the EU is getting involved. Britain is getting involved. They all have something to say about this now. Why? Because Putin is now what he is, sur is surrounded now the what? The nuclear power plant in Ukraine. A nuclear power plant. You can imagine the type of havoc this will cause. You understand? So read that again, verse 20. Second book of Exodus, chapter 15, verse 20. Read. Behold, saith God, I will mm -hmm. call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. The kings of the earth is these nations, the empires that are ruling over us right now. Go ahead. Which are from the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm. That goes into what? That goes into China. Go ahead. From the south. Mm -hmm. From the east. Mm -hmm. And Libanus. That's Lebanon. Libanus is Lebanon. Go ahead. To turn themselves one against another. That's the, that's the, the most that does his plan. To turn the nations once against each other. Go ahead. And repay the things that they have done to them. And the whole point of the Lord doing this is to pay back, is to repay back the things that they've done to us. They have to, they all have to account for what they've done to us. You understand? Go ahead. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen. Because the nations are still oppressing us today. We are the chosen people of the Most High, but then the, the nations are still oppressing us today. In fact, it's getting worse. You understand? Go ahead. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. The Lord says he's going to pay them back in their bosom. Go ahead. Thus say the Lord God. Thus say the Lord God. That's what he's saying right there. The Lord is going to pay back these nations for what they did to us. They're all going to pay. You understand? Now, let's go back. Matthew 24. Read verse 29 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 29. Mm-hmm. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. Shall the, the sun will be darkened. Go ahead. And the moon shall not give a light. And the moon will not give a light. That goes into nuclear winter. Okay, where the sky is going to be blocked off because of what? The level of radiation after the nuclear fallout. So the sky is going to be darkened. It's called nuclear winter. Okay, go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. That's their satellites. Okay, come on. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is World War Three. That's what we just read in Second Esther. So now Christ is letting us know. Listen, I'm going to show up when in the in the midst of a war. You understand? 
That Ezra is prophesying about it. Christ is saying the same thing. He's going to show up when there's a, when World War Three is taking place. He says, that's when I'm going to show up. You understand? Watch this. Give me Joel 2 verse 10. Joel 2 verse 10. This is World War Three right here. Watch this. Read it. The book of Joel, chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. The earth shall quake before them. Read. The heavens shall tremble. The heavens will tremble. That's what we just read in Matthew. Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The sun and the moon will be darkened. You understand? This goes into judgment. War. Read. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Because the sky will be darkened. Okay. Joel 3 verse 15 now. Watch this. The book of Joel chapter 3 verse 15. Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. You see what he's saying? Because this is during what? The value of Jehoshaphat. The value of decision, when the Mosai is going to make a decision, he's going to plead with the nations with what? With fire for what they've done to us, which they are still yet doing unto this day unto his chosen, which is us this day in South Africa, all over the world scattered. Okay, come on. And the stars shall withdraw their shine. Now let's go back. Matthew 24, read verse 30 now. Watch this. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 30. Now, remember, brothers and sisters, don't forget what we read in Acts 1 and 9. He says, the same way we saw this man go up in a chariot, in like manner, that's how he's going to return. I'm paraphrasing Acts 1, 11. Read that, verse 30. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. You see, meaning in the midst of a war, World War Three, the third war, that's when the Lord will show up. You understand? That's when the Lord will show up. Hold that. Give me that in Revelation. Okay. Get that in Revelation chapter. Um, get re read Revelation chapter eleven. Read Revelation chapter eleven and verse. Let's see what I want. No, no, no. Revelation nine. I think that's what I want. Revelation nine verse twelve. Read that. Book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 12. Mm -hmm. One war was passed. Now, one war is World War I in 1945. You understand? No, in 1917. Okay? This is World War. It started in 1914. It ended in 1918. The one, the one war here is talking about the First World War. 1914 to 1918. You understand? Which in the nineteen in the nineteen seventeen, that's when they what they constructed the Balfour Declaration mandate. You understand? So read that again, verse twelve. The Book of Revelations, chapter nine, verse twelve. Ah, uh -huh. one woe is past. Mm -hmm. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. You see what John is saying? He says, "One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more." Hereafter, what is the woes? Goes into destruction. World War One, World War Two, World War Three. Get that in Revelation chapter eleven. Okay, read verse fourteen. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter eleven, verse fourteen. Read. The second war is past. The second war is past. Now this is the second world war. The second war is past. This was nineteen forty-five. You understand? Nineteen forty-five. Okay, go ahead. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe will come quickly. What is the third woe? World War Three that we just read about in Second Ezra, that we just read about in Joel two and ten, Joel three fifteen, Matthew twenty four. You understand? Watch this. The third woe. The third year. The third woe says it will come quick. That's what you are seeing because World War One. It was Austria Germany going against each other. Nobody was getting involved. All of a sudden. The other nations started to get involved, and then it was boom, World War I. You see what's happening in Ukraine? You might think it's a small matter. No, this is prophecy being fulfilled right before your eyes. So don't sleep, brothers. Don't sleep. You understand? Prophecy is being fulfilled. Look now, the other nations are starting to get involved in this war. What is this letting you know? Listen, the time is short. We are at the door. Understand that. Get that in uh, Revelation 12. Okay, Revelation chapter 12, read verse 12. Watch this. 
This is going to talk about the Third World War. Watch this thing. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Read. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, mm -hmm. and ye that dwell in them. Read. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. You see what he's saying? Woe. Woe, meaning destruction to the inhabitants of the inhabitants of the earth and of the seas. Talk about the nations here, including our people who don't want to repent. So guess what? This war that he's talking about here, this is World War Three. here. Okay, go ahead. For the devil is come down unto you. The devil is come down unto us. Because right now we're being oppressed by the devil. Okay, go ahead. Having great wrath. Mm -hmm. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. That's why these nations are oppressing us like this. Especially the main culprit who is the head of the villages. Like you read in Habakkuk 3. Guess what? That's the white man. That's America. That's Europe. That's Russia. They are the ones that are at the, they are the head of the dragon. So guess what? What we're reading here, when it says he knoweth but because he had by the short time. Because he's been messing up with the, with the timelines. He's been messing up with the years. You understand? Because when you do some research, you, you start to read it. We are actually not in 2022. You understand? The white man is messing up with the years so that why? We get confused, but we have the Holy Scriptures with us. Now, watch this. Go back to Matthew 24. Read verse 30 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The tribes of the earth that will mourn is the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Because we must look up for your salvation draw cometh, draweth nigh. Yeah, we're going to mourn. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be crying. Or finally, this nightmare is over. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with uh. power and great glory. That's the same. That's what we read in Acts. It says, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of, clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Because we're going to see him. Every eye will see him. That's what he's saying. You understand? Get that in uh, Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, read verse 7. Okay. Book of Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 7. Read. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Carry on. Come on. And every eye shall see him. And every eye shall see him. That's a heavy thing right there. Because when there is raining, I don't know, it's raining in Limpopo when you are here. You just hear over the phone, oh, it was raining. You don't see the rain. But when the Lord comes back, he says, everybody on earth is going to see him. What is he going to do? Remember, he created the, he created what? He created these worlds at the command of the Mosai. You think he cannot bend space and all that stuff that everybody see him? Mm. That's some heavy stuff, man. Read that again, verse 7. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. Go ahead. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Read. And they also which pierced him. You see, those that pierced him to make sure he was gone, they struck a javelin on, the side of, on his side to make sure that he was gone. Go ahead. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. The kindred of the earth is the tribes that were mourn in Matthew 24. Go ahead. Even so, amen. Even so, amen to that. We agree. We want this thing. You understand? Yeah, we want the Lord to return. But we're not ready. But it doesn't mean that we're not waiting for the second coming. We are waiting for it. That's why we're preparing ourselves. We're making sure that our lambs are oiled. You understand? We don't become those foolish virgins. That's really what the Lord is showing us right here. You understand when he comes in. Go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 11 again. The book of Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Read. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Uh -huh. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye he, as he have seen him go into heaven. You see what he's telling them? He says, the same way he went up, he flew, 
He's going to come down with the chariots. We, I went over there. Okay, go back to John now, chapter 16. Read verse 32 again. No, no, no. Luke, Luke 19. Luke chapter 19. Let's read verse 12 again. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 12. Read. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And to return. So we just read about his return. When he in in during his return, when he when he when he descend into the earth, there's going we are going to be in the midst of World War Three. That's what you need to understand. Okay. Now John 16, read verse 32 again. Well, John chapter 16, verse 32. Read. Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. We're going to leave him alone. Go ahead. And yet I am not alone mm -hmm. because the Father is with me. What is he telling them? What is he telling them? Read again, read again. I'm going to show you something here. Come on, come on. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 32. Read. Behold, the hour coming, yea, is now come, uh -huh. that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Because we are not going to be with him. You understand? And shall leave me alone. Because we are not going to be with him. We already read in Acts 1, you understand? He's going to return back to the Father. We read in Luke 19 verse 12, he will return. Watch this. Go ahead. And yet I am not alone. He says, yet I'm not going to be alone. What is he saying? Read. Because the Father is with me. Go back to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. He says, I'm not going to be alone where I'm going because my father will be with me. Read that. Hey, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person mm -hmm. and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He says, because my father is with me. He's letting you, the apostle Paul is telling us, you understand? He's sitting on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's the most High God. So he's telling you, listen, I'm going to be with my father. And while I'm with my father, I'm going to, I, I need, I'm going to put the spirit upon you. Get that in uh, Malachi. Mm. You know, to ours, I'm going, I'm going, I'm dealing with the parables, actually. I'm dealing with the parables. I'm dealing with the parables. Stay with me. Uh, uh, Malachi chapter 4. Malachi 4 verse 4. Because while he's with the father, because he's not alone, guess what? Israel is getting themselves together. That's what we're doing right now. Read what you got. The book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded him, uh, which I commanded unto him in horror for all Israel. With the statutes and judgments. The Lord commanded us what? The command is, don't forget the laws of Moses that he taught you when you came out of Egypt. Go ahead. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Because we know Elijah, you understand, John the Baptist was Elijah coming back. John the Baptist was during the time of what? The time of Christ. The time of what? The time of Rome. But listen to what he's saying here. Read that again, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Because be during the time of Rome, it wasn't the great and dreadful day of the Lord. It wasn't that. We were in slavery. So what is, Christ, what is Malachi talking, telling us here in the spirit of Christ? He's telling us that, that the great and dreadful day of the Lord is going to be when the Lord descends into the earth with millions of angels. Why? Because he's letting us know, I'm going to send you Elijah in the last days. And what would Elijah do? Go ahead. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. You see that? He's going to turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Come on. 
lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Lest I come and destroy the earth. He says, but before I do that, I need to send you Elijah the prophet to gather the people together. I'm going to do that thing. Once the mission of Elijah is done, then the son of man will show up. That's what he's telling us. You understand? He's telling us these things. Watch this. Um, read, go back to John 16. Read verse 33 now. The book of John, chapter 16, verse 33. Go ahead. These things have spoken unto you, that in me he might have peace. You see that? He's, I've spoken, I've spoken to you about these things, that in me he might have peace. Because what is he saying? There was no peace between us and Northern Kingdom. You understand? Get that in Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, read verse, read verse 13. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. Go ahead. But now in Christ Jesus, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Talk about Northern Kingdom meaning all 12. Now we are going to be made nigh by the blood of Christ, but he's really going into the northern kingdom. Go ahead. For he is our peace. For he is our what? For he is our peace. Christ is our peace. He's the one that will restore peace among the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why he's saying, listen, I'm going to give you what? You might have peace. In that you may have peace. You understand? Go ahead. Who has made both one uh -huh. and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Because why? There was a war between Judah and Israel because of the split after Re after King Solomon died. Re of Jeroboam took over. Jeroboam also was over northern kingdom at the time. Go back. John 16 verse 33. The book of John chapter 16 verse 33. Go ahead. These things have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In me you might have peace. That's why, because he's our peace. He's the one that will restore peace among the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. In the world you shall have tribulation. You see what he's saying? In the world you shall have what? In the world you shall have tribulation. When, what is he talking about? He's talking about the last days. The tribulation that we read in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. That's the tribulation. It says, in the world, you're going to have tribulation, slavery, colonization, forced migration, apartheid. All of that, we're going to have that in the world. Why? Because we're going to be scattered among all nations on earth. Read. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You see that? It says, be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. Meaning what? He did his job. He showed us the right example. We must follow the same thing and overcome this world. You understand? We must overcome the evils of this world by being washed with the blood of Christ, keeping the commandments in the faith of the Messiah. That's what he's saying. Okay? Now, get Matthew 22 and 1. Matthew 22. Let's start at verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 1. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, by what? How did he speak to them? And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables. By parables. By parables. By proverbs. Okay, go ahead. And said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. You see what he's saying? He says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Who is this king that made a marriage for his son? That's the Most High God. This is talking about the Most High God here. He made a marriage for his son. Read again verse 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 2. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Who's the bride? Israel. Who's the groom? Christ. He is the groom. Okay. Get that in um, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Oh, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Read. Turn, O backsliding children. 
say the mm -hmm. Lord. Come on. For I am married unto you. For I am what? For I am married unto you. You see what he's saying? He's a turn of backsliding children because we back, we backslid, we we decided to backslide into sin. He says, but we must turn. Oh, backsliding children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you. Go ahead. And I will take you one of a city mm -hmm. and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. Okay, now watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Uh -huh. For I have espoused you to one husband. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy because I have espoused you to one husband. Let's talk about Christ. He says, for I am married unto you. Go ahead. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see that? That I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. We virgins because now we want to be pure. And then in terms of what? The spirit. We're getting our minds right. That's why it says, I may present you as a chaste virgin. He may present us pure unto Christ. The same way a virgin that has not dealt with a man is presented to her husband. You understand? Get that in Ephesians. Get if he, you know what? Before you get Ephesians, get me Isaiah 62, read verse 4. Then we're going to go to Ephesians. Isaiah 62, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 4. Go ahead. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. You see that? Thou shalt be, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken because right now we are forsaken, it seems. Because that's what the nations think. That's what many of our people believe that the Lord has forsaken them. No, the Lord is waking us up. He did forsook us. Why? Because we broke his commandment. But he's having mercy when he sent Christ. He put us in slavery to pay for the things that we say, amen, amen, into 2027. So now it says, you are not going to be termed forsaken. Why? Go ahead. Neither shall thy land anymore be termed desolate. Because right now our land is desolate. You understand? The people that are in our land today, the Palestinians and the and Amalek, guess what? That's why the land is desolate because the true inhabitants, inhabitants are not there. Where are we? We are in captivity. Go ahead. But thou shall be called Hefzibah. But we're going to be called Hefzibah. Hefzibah means my delight is in her. My delight. He's going to explain it right here. Watch this. Go ahead. And thy land, Beula. 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 And our list says what? He says, thou shalt be called Hephzibah Hes and my land Beulah. Go ahead. For the Lord delighted in thee. That's what Hephzibah means. Hephzibah means for the Lord delighted in thee. Go ahead. And thy land shall be married. You see that? That means Beulah. Married. Beulah means married. That's what we read in Jeremiah 3 verse 14. You understand? The land shall be married. We know Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Israel is a people before is a place. Get that in Genesis 32, 27. So we understand that. The book of Genesis, chapter 32, verse 27. Come on. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And mm. he said, Jacob. Go ahead. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. You see that? So our forefather Jacob's name was given this name, the name Israel. You understand? We were not in our land yet. We were not in our kingdom. But guess what? The name was given in Genesis 32. Then his name was changed to Israel. So guess what? Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Because we are married unto the Lord. Now give me Ephesians. Chapter 5 is 23. Ephesians 5. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 5 is 23. Go ahead. For the husband is the head of the wife. Mm -hmm. Even as Christ is the head of the church. You see that? So the husband is the head of the wife. 
The same way Christ is the head of the church. Go ahead. And he is the savior of the body. You see that Christ is the savior of the body of the nation of Israel, just like the husband is the savior of his house. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So the same way the church, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, let's get that in 1 Chronicles 28 verse 8. So we see who's the church. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 8. Read that. This book of Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 8. Come on. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. What is Israel? The congregation of the Lord. So the children of Israel, we are the congregation of the Lord. Okay, give me that in Psalm 74, verse 2. Psalm 74, verse 2. We are the congregation of the Lord. All these other denominations that you see out here, those are not the congregation of the Mosa because they don't acknowledge themselves as the Israelites. They reject that. They say spiritual Israel. They are still blaspheming the name of the Lord. They hate, they hate the, the people of the Lord. Read that. Psalm 74. Read verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 74, verse 2. Read. Remember thy congregation. Remember thy what? Remember thy congregation. Remember thy congregation, O oh Lord. Come on. Which thou hast purchased of old. He which has purchased of old, because he bought us out of Egypt. Go ahead. The rod of thine inheritance, mm -hmm. which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt. You see that the congregation of the Lord is Mount Zion. This Mount Zion, okay, wherein, the, where, wherein thou hast dwelt. The congregation of the Lord is Mount Zion. Get that in Acts 7, 38. Of Acts chapter 7, verse 38. Go ahead. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the mm -hmm. angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. You see that this is he. The he is Moses that was in one, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel. Go ahead. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. You see that thing? So get that into 21 and 1. Let's see who was, who was, who was the church that was in the wilderness with Moses. Let's get that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. This be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Mm -hmm. All 12. All 12 tribes of Israel. Moses was speaking to us. Come on. On this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. You see that? That's the church. That's the congregation. Go back to Ephesians now, chapter 5. Verse 24 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 24. Read. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. You see that? So as the church, as the congregation, Mount Zion... The children of Israel that was with Moses in the wilderness, guess what? It says, as the church, as we the church, the 12 tribes of Israel, we are subject unto Christ. It says, let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So you see what he's doing? He's doing a comparison here. He's paralleling things that are the same. The church is the 12 tribes, which is the bride. You understand? And, the, and Christ, he is the head of the church. The wife is subject to the husband. The husband is the head of the house. Okay, go ahead. Husbands, love your wives. Mm -hmm. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You see the job? Because Christ is the price. They are just the same way as the, your husband is the price. We the men, we the price. They, they always says what? Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Guess what? That's the job of the black man. We're going to give our lives for our families, just like Christ gave his life for the nation. Go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see that? He might sanctify and cleanse the church, you understand, with the washing of water by the word. He's baptizing us with the word of God. He's teaching us. Go ahead. 
that he might present it to himself a glorious church. You see that? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Come on. Not having spot or ah. wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So what is he talking? What is he saying? He's telling us that well, how the church must look like. Because we the church, it says he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot. That goes into sin, lusts, you understand? Basically, what? Idolatries, wrinkle, or any such thing. This goes into what? The lusts of other things entering in. But it should be holy and without blemish. We just read this not so long ago. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. Because he said the same thing here. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. Read. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Mm -hmm. For I have espoused you to one husband. Read. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see that the apostle Paul just said chaste here. He says that I may, I may what? I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Because chaste meaning disciplined. You understand? Virgin meaning pure. Without what? Go back to Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5, read verse 27 again. Of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. Go ahead. Then he might present to himself a glorious church, uh -huh. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So now that part right there is what? Chaste virgin. Chaste virgin in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. Go ahead. But that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, read verse 1. Watch this. Because the same thing that we're reading here, we read in Jeremiah 3, 14, verse 1, explains what we just read here in Ephesians 5. Watch this. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. They say, if a man put away his wife. You see that? If a man put away his wife. This is a parable right here also. It's a hard saying. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, uh -huh. and she go from him, Read. and become another man's. Where? In slavery. We as a nation, the church, we would become another man's. We'll become what? We become enslaved. You understand? And this is what we would do spiritually. Watch this. Go ahead. Shall he return unto her again? Shall he, this woman, return unto this man again when she been playing the harlot? Watch this, go ahead. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Remember, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Remember, it says, thy land is going to be called Beulah, meaning what? Married. Okay? It says, shall not that land be greatly polluted? Because as a nation, we are greatly polluted with the philosophies of the white man. Go ahead. Chinese, Arabs, and what? Yeah, Chinese Arabs, the Chinese with their Buddha and all that, the Arabs with their Allah, that black rock in Mecca, you understand, the white man with his Christianity, politics, democracy, 50-50, feminism, go ahead. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. That's what we did as a nation, that's what we did as Israel. We played the harlot with many lovers because we went into all nations on earth, read. Yet return again to me said the Lord. He says, Israel, we must return back to him now. That's what we're doing. Because we were playing, the, we've been playing the harlot with many lovers. You understand? Saving these nations. So now he's saying, listen, we played the harlot with many lovers among the four corners of the earth. Yet, return again to me, said the Lord. He says, we must return back to him. That's what he's saying. Go back to Ephesians 5, verse 27. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 5 is 27. Go ahead. That he might, that he might present to himself a glorious church, mm -hmm. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now jump down to verse 32. Watch this. Verse 32. This is a great mystery. So now he's going to explain everything that we just read is a great mystery. Husband and wife. Christ and the church, 
He says, that's a great mystery, the husband and wife. Watch this. Go ahead. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. You see that? He says, marriage is a great mystery, but I'm talking about what? Christ and the 12 tribes of Israel. Why? Because we married unto him as a, as a nation. You understand? So the marriages that we have one with another is what? It's a representation of Christ. You understand? The man represents Christ in the house. The woman represents the disciple. Guess what? Christ is the head, the church. We are subject unto him. That's how it must be in the house. That's how it must be in the congregation. That's how we as the 12 tribes of Israel, we are married unto him. But we must, before we get that marriage, before the Lord returns, before the bride, the, the groom returns, the bride must get themselves right. You see this? The bride must get themselves right. That's why the Lord is raising the men up first. Why? Because when the black man gets himself right, who's supposed to follow after? The woman. The same way Christ got himself together, he died for the 12 tribes of Israel, he went up there to the Father. He's waiting for Israel to get it together. That's what you are seeing on the streets. You see men, we are the, the men is the more. We are the ones that come, the men is the one that come to camp a lot of the times to hear the word. Why? Because the Lord is dealing with the men. Now when the men is together, guess what? The black woman has no choice but to what? To obey. That's the same parable with what? With us and the church and with us as the church and the Messiah. Everybody get that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew. Okay. Matthew 22. Read verse Matthew 22. Um, read verse 3 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And sent forth his servants to call them that were that were bidden to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And they would not come. You see that part right there? Remember, the most like God, he says what? He made a marriage for his son. That's Christ. So Christ is the is the is the is the, the groom waiting for the bride to get it together. But read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them. That were bidden to the wedding. So the servants that will be calling them that were bidden to the marriage. Who's the servants? Get that in Leviticus 25. Verse 55. Remember, Christ went back to the Father to get a kingdom and to return. So now when he went, he sent forth the servants to call the people that were bidden that are invited to the wedding to do what? To get it together. But they would not come. Now read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. Mm -hmm. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. You see that? Unto me, the children of Israel are servants. Read. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God. You see that? So we are the servants. Okay. Now, go back to Matthew 22. I wanted to get something in here, but it's fine. Matthew chapter 22, read verse 3 one more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. So the servants is the teachers. The servants, their job is to call the people that are invited to the wedding. Because what would the servants be doing? Get that in Luke 14, 23. This is what the servants will be doing. Okay. The book of Luke. Chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, mm -hmm. Go out into the highways and edges and compel them to come in. Read. That my house may be filled. And compel them and bid them to the wedding. That's the job of the servants, the teachers. The job of the teachers is to go to the streets and bid and command them that we bid into the marriage to come into the, into the wedding. You understand? To come to the wedding. That's what, we, that's what we're doing right now, brothers. We're inviting people to the wedding. Now, um, go back to Matthew 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And send forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. Right. And they would not come. You see that? 
and they would not come. Now, watch this. The servants will go out to the streets and teach. They that, and they would not come. So the servants will go to the streets and teach and teach the people to come that were bidden to the wedding. And they, the people that were bidden to the wedding, they would not come. Hmm. What is this going into? Hold this. Give me Genesis 49 verse 8. You know what? Before we get that, right? Before we get that. Give me, give me, give me the, give me the book of Zacharias. Okay. Give me Zechariah 12 and 7. I think I want to go there. Zechariah 12 and 7. Let's read that real quick. Zechariah 12 and verse 7. Zechariah chapter 12 and 7. Go ahead. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Remember, the servants, the, the servants that were sent to, uh, the sent to call them that were beaten to the wedding. Guess what? How, when, what, who, which, 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 which tribes are going to be called in first. He's going to tell you because there's an order to this. Southern Kingdom must be called in first, Judah particularly, you understand? So that's why it says he sent the servants that were beaten to come, to call them that were beaten to the wedding, and they would not come. I'm going to deal with that last part in a second. But the beginning of beating the servants to come, the servants to come to the wedding is what? He's got stages in this. Read that. Zechariah 12 verse 7, one more again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, 7. Right. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. He is going to save the tents of Judah first. Judah first. Judah first. Go ahead. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that? They, will, they must not magnify themselves against Judah. But guess what? Judah will be woken up first. I'm going to show you something. Um, the drum 33 verse 7, read that. Once Judah figure out who Judah is, you understand? This is what, this is the spirit that will come upon Judah. This is what Judah will be doing. Okay, the servants that way went, that had to go to the streets and wake up, they, they wake up the rest of the nation. But first starting with Judah, read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And this is the blessing of Judah. The blessing of Judah is what, come on? And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. The voice of Judah, come on. And bring him unto his people. And do what? And bring him unto his people. Because guess what? Judah will go to his people. Judah is not going to go to other people of the other nation. Judah will go to his people, come on. And let his, ha and let his hands be sufficient for him. Mm-hmm. And be thou in help to him from his enemies. So you need to understand. So what we're reading here, once Judah wakes up first, Judah, the Lord will put the spirit and the blessing on Judah to go out there to teach the gospel to the people, to bid them to the way. You understand? But it says they would not, but they would not come. Get Genesis 49 verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Go ahead. Judah. Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. So now this, this right here, when it says Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, is going into the 60s when Judah was waking up. You understand? All over the earth, starting in North America. And then it happened, it happened also, it also started to happen the same time period when Judah was waking up, but not with the scriptures at that point. You understand? There will be years of Israel waking up. So that's why I read that again, verse 8. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. The rest of the tribes will praise Judah because Judah will be what? Will be fighting for civil rights. Will be fighting for the people to do what? To so that we can vote, to march, to protest peacefully and all of that. Judah will set those things. That's why you look at people like Nelson Mandela. So you understand? So he fought for what he believed in. He ended up in jail, so on and so forth, right? And then the certain laws that was passed in the country for us to be able to have so-called freedoms. So now we have the thing called the freedom of speech, freedom of religion. We are freely able to teach the gospel to our people. So if it wasn't for what they've done, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Understand that also. Go ahead. 
Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You see, Judah's hand will be in the neck of the enemy. Fighting with the enemy for what? Equal rights. We, want, we, we also want, we don't want to be oppressed the way that we are. That's why many black leaders rose up. Steve Biko, Chris Hani, Mandela, who else? Um, Tieti mm, Machinini. He's one of them that rose up. And Tieti Machinini's mentor, he also rose up. You understand? Inogun Kijima, he rose up. You understand? You've got um, Albert Lutuli, they rose up, so on and so forth. In, in, in the rest of the continent, you've got Bukwame Kuruma, Thomas Sankara, you understand, with Patrice Lumumba. Those are the people that, you know, we talk about, well, you understand? We talk about Malcolm X, Martin Luther, all of them. Those are the men, Stokey Carmichael, so on and so forth. They are the ones that would be what? Your hand shall be what? Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You see that thing? Go ahead. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Your father's children will bow down before thee. Why? Because the people will, will put their trust in what Judah, they put their trust in what Judah was doing. You understand? During the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, so on and so forth. It's still going on today. You understand? But now, today, I mean, the truth is spread. But during that time in the 60s, it wasn't like it is now. You understand? Although Israel was going to the seats and teach, the majority of the Israelites were not, the majority of the, our people that didn't know that were Israel, they were not listening to that. They were still stuck on what? Politics, democracy, and so on and so forth. Okay? Read. Judah is the lion's whelp. Mm -hmm. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? You see what he's saying? Judah is a lion, and from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Because if you have a prey, that means there's a predator. So we stop being the predator to, go, to pursue the prey. He says, thou art gone up. He stooped down as if now he's really going to cause some havoc. You understand? But guess what? He couched as a lion. He got into politics, religion, Christianity, democracy, 50-50, as in we became an old lion real quick. Who's going to raise Judah up? Christ is the one that will do it. Christ is the one that is going to activate that lion spirit in Judah to do what he's supposed to. And that's what you're seeing today. But here what we did in Genesis 49, it's over a process of time. You understand? Get that in Baruch 3, verse 10. Of Baruch chapter 3 verse 10. Wait. How happeneth it, Israel, mm -hmm. that thou art in thine enemy's land? Remember what we read in John 16. We would be scattered. We are in our enemy's land. Come on. That thou art western old in a strange country. Now we became old in a strange country. Country that is not ours. The lands of our captivity. What made Judah to get old? Politics, religion, Christianity. Islam, so on and so forth, drugs, alcoholism. That's how Judah became old real quick. Go ahead. That thou art defiled with the dead. Now we are defiled with these nations that are dead. Go ahead. That, are, that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. He says we are counted, we are counted or acknowledged with them that go down into the grave, meaning those that die. It was only dead, that's it. You cannot talk beyond the grave. You understand? Go ahead. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. That's the, that, that, guess what? This fountain of wisdom right here is the knowledge that we didn't want. We didn't have during that time, although Israel was waking up. So when it says they will not come, because during that time, the people wasn't listening. They were involved in these, in the, you know, black liberation and all that stuff. They were not looking at the Israelites teaching on the street. They didn't take them serious. You understand? That the same thing that happened back then is still going on today. Our people are still plagued with that spirit. You understand? Thinking politics is the way, which is not the way. Okay? Now, give me the book of Ezekiel 37 and 1. We're still dealing with they would not come. Why? 
because over a process of time, Jura needed to be woken up first. But as Jura was for Jura to wake up, where did he start? He started with what demanding that we need we need to ban the Tompas. We need to ban apartheid and so forth. Although he's still alive and well, but my point is, it was over a process of time. Ezekiel thirty-seven and one. Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven, verse one. Read. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out of the spirit of the Lord, mm -hmm. and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So now you see what he's saying. The Lord now, the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel, our forefather. And it carried him out in the spirit of the Lord and set him down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. The midst of the valley. With this midst of this valley right here is talking about what? Get that in uh, Psalm 23. Verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4. Read. Right? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The valley of the shadow of death is in the lands of our captivity, slavery. Go ahead. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Come on. For thou art with me. Mm -hmm. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because eventually the rod and the staff would comfort us because the Lord will send the prophet Elijah to return. But he says, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This valley right here, what is it talking about? Get that in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11, read verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. That's the valley. Their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. Come on. Which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. Spiritually is called Sodom because homosexual activity, guess what? Was pushed from America, Europe, and now it's on the continent. And South Africa is the second country to adopt that on the continent to legalize all that nonsense. Okay, go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. You see that? It's called spiritually Sodom and Egypt, because why? We are in captivity, we are in Egypt again. Slavery again. You understand? Read that part again. Where also our Lord was crucified. Because Christ's image was crucified with the image of Caesar Bourget. Did we, uh, just, just John 19, 15? John the 19th chapter and the 15th verse. Read that. The book of John. Chapter 19, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, shall mm -hmm. I crucify your king? Shall I what? Shall I crucify your king? So the subject matters about crucifixion. Is it shall I crucify your king? Go ahead. The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. Today, that's why you see that white image today. Because they said, crucify him. Where also our Lord was crucified. Because today, they are crucifying what Christ looks like. Who did he come to save? What did he teach? They are crucifying his image and his message too. In all these demonic churches. You understand? The temples of the great goddess Diane. That's what they're doing. I'm talking about the Christian church. Okay, now watch this. Go back, Ezekiel 37, read verse 2 again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And cause me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. You see that? So these bones is talk about the whole house of Israel. You understand? So, but what he's saying is, He's saying the Lord showed him the desolate, the desolate, the desolation of Zion. That's what he's showing him. You understand? Where we are scattered as a nation. Read. And he, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? So the Lord is asking Ezekiel, Son of man, 
Can these bones live? Why is he asking that? Why is the Lord asking that? Because we will be completely destroyed by these nations. You understand? They would, wa- they would, they would wear us out to the point where now the Lord is talking to his, the Lord is even asking his Israel, can these bones live, son of man? Okay, go ahead. And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. He says, Lord, you the one that knows, because what I'm looking at, I don't see that. You understand at that point, read. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You see what he's saying? He says, prophesy upon these bones. What is the point? Where did we just read that? We read it in Matthew. It says, go back to Matthew 22. It says, prophesy unto these bones, okay? Prophesy unto them. Matthew 22. Read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Mm-hmm. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Because why? Because our minds would be completely gone. So that's why they would not come. Why? Because, go back to Ezekiel 37, verse 4, we're going to read down. The book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 4. Right. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, you dry bones. You, you Israelites that are in the congregation of the dead, because the bones is what? There's, there's no breath. There's, everybody's dead. You understand? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live he says you say what he's saying prophet say unto these bones i behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live so guess what this is over a process of time it wasn't a one day thing from the 60s on up until today that is what was taking place he says what i'll behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall meaning in the future you gonna live Go ahead. And I will lay sinews upon you. Sinews. Okay, that goes into muscles and figure and, and ligaments and so forth. Go ahead. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you. So when he says Amen. flesh, hold on, flesh goes into what? Judah seeking identity. He says, I'm going to put flesh up, I will bring up flesh upon you. That's when we starting to seek identity. We're grouping ourselves together, black consciousness movement and all that. That's what the flesh is re- making reference to. Go ahead. And cover you with skin. Uh-huh. And put breath in you. And you shall live and shall know that I am the Lord. Go ahead. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Mm-hmm. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. So this noise, who's creating this noise? Judah, in the neck of his enemy, trying to get what? The black consciousness movement, the movements that were started, who black sash and all that stuff. You know, that's part of the feminist stuff. But they also just jump into the mix. Why? Because that's the time when the Lord says, I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to raise you up. Okay, go ahead. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews of the flesh came up upon them. Right. And the skin covered from above, but there was no breath in them. That part right there. Read that part again. I need you to read a little quicker. Come on. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 8. Right. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. But there was no breath in them. Why? Because remember, it says what? Go back to Matthew 22 now. Matthew chapter 22, read verse 3 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Read. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Because there was no breath in them. Although they were busy, with, we were busy, you know, get, getting our identity back and all that as the Southern Kingdom, Judah particularly. Guess what? 
There was no breath in us. We wasn't using the Bible back then in the 60s and all that to wake up the people. Although the people were teaching on the streets, but guess what? There was no breath in these bones. Why? They were still caught up in politics, religion, and all this stuff, democracy, black power, black consciousness, so on and so forth. So that's why I said there was no breath in them. They would not come because the breath did, had not entered into them yet. Okay, go back. Ezekiel 37, verse 8 again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 30, 37, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. The breath, the breath is talking about the laws of God. Get that? Wisdom of Solomon 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, read verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7, verse 24. Come on. For wisdom is more moving than any emotion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. So the subject matter is wisdom. Come on. For she is the breath of the power of God. You see that? So wisdom is the breath of the power of God. That's the wisdom of the Lord. Is the breath of the power of God. Go back. Ezekiel 37. Read verse 10 now. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 37 verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Mm -hmm. And the breath came into them. Really? And they lived. Mm -hmm. And stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. So now. But what you want to notice is that. In verse 9. It says what? No, no. In, yeah, in verse 9. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, mm -hmm. and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. You see what he's saying? He says what? Prophesy unto the wind, son of man, and say unto them, unto the wind, Thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds. You understand? Because we are scattered all over the earth as Israel. Read. Is there, read that again, verse 9. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So that's what the Lord is commanding Ezekiel to do. You understand? So let's deal with the wind. Get that in uh, John 3, verse 8. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. The wind bloweth where it listeth. He says, the wind bloweth where it listeth. Though he's going to tell you what the wind is. Go ahead. And thou hearest the sound thereof. Because you can hear the sound of the wind. Read. But canst not tell whence it cometh. You cannot tell where the wind is coming from. But you can tell what there's wind because you hear of the noise. You see the leaves move. You understand? You see the effects of the wind. You understand? So go ahead. And whither it goeth. Mm -hmm. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You, say, you see what he's saying? So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Because guess what? The Spirit of the Lord will come from... When, wherever, it will learn and whosoever that is in the world that is not woken up to this truth, to be inspired to come into this truth and come and learn and become a soldier or a sister coming in and so on and so forth. So that's what he's talking about. Because you don't see the direction he's coming from. Who is going to learn on? The people that we teach, you don't know who the Lord is going to wake up in the crowd when we teach. Okay, that's what he's saying. So go back to Ezekiel 37, read verse 9 again. Go of Ezekiel. Chapter 37, verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, mm -hmm. son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. They breathe upon these slain, meaning these bones, that these bones may live. Okay? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with verse 10. Not now. I'm gonna deal with it a little bit later on. So, go back to Matthew 22. Read verse 3 one more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 3. Read. And sent forth his servants 
to call them that were bidding to the wedding. And they and they would not come. And they would not come. Why? Because we still to be busy, occupied, you understand, with things that they're not gonna necessarily benefit the nation per se in that much. Why? Because the thing that's supposed to wake up the black man is what? The laws of God, the spirit of Christ is what would wake up the black man. So now, or they end the Hispanic man, the Native American Indian man. Okay, so now watch this. Give me, uh, keep going, read verse four. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, oh, right. oh, 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 hold on. What did he do? Again, he sent forth other servants. He sent forth other servants. He sent forth other servants. Okay, now this is what verse you were? Verse four, sir. Okay, yes. So he sent forth other servants. Okay, now watch this. These other servants that he would he would send forth. Hmm. Let me backtrack a little bit. There's something I want to touch on, actually. Get Ezekiel 37, read verse 10. I think I want to touch on that. Read verse, read verse 9. Read verse 9. Remember, the servants will go out to the highways and byways. Ezekiel 37 and 9. I think I want to touch on that. Let's read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 9. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. He says, breathe upon these slain that they may live. Okay? So when the, when the breath of life comes into these bones, they're going to live. Because you're going to have what? You're going to have Israel waking up. You're going to have Israel waking up to go to the seeds and teach. And as they're teaching, they are those, they're the people that those that are beaten to the wedding, they're not going to come. Why? Because you're going to have the people that will believe what the prophets are teaching, and you're going to have those that don't believe what the prophets are teaching. But it's also going to go into a, pro is what? It's a process of time. It wasn't the same time thing. Back then, it was in the 60s, but today it goes into what? It goes into the people that will believe what the scripture says, they'll come in, and those that don't believe, they'll, that's the people that will not come. You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. Get the book of Zechariah, right? Get Zechariah chapter 13. I think I want to touch on this. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Zechariah. Chapter 13, verse 8. Now I'm bringing it to today now. I'm bringing it to in these last, you know, beyond the 60s now. Watch this. Read. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Mm. But the third shall be left therein. So these two thirds, the two parts when he's talking about, talking about two thirds of Israel will not repent. That's the one that would not come because they are part of that number where they are not going to come. You understand? But watch this. It says they will be cut off and die, but the third shall be left there. And that's one third that is prophesied to return and do what this Bible says. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. Go ahead. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, mm -hmm. nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto Shiloh, which is Christ, shall the gathering of the people be, because Christ will do what? Christ will raise Judah up, like we read in Zechariah 12 and 7. He will raise Judah up, and Judah will go to the streets, you understand? And as Judah is professing, Judah will go to the to his people and bring the people in. There are those that though that are not that are not gonna come. You understand? Now watch this. Get Revelation 5 and 1. The Lord is the one that will raise Judah up. Because remember, Judah says he couched as a lion, he became old. Revelation 5 and 1. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. Mm -hmm. A book written, a book written within, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So this book that is written is talking about what? That's the Bible. 
the understanding of the scriptures, the one that is written within and without. Get that in Ezekiel. Because in Ezekiel, something similar is happening to Ezekiel also. Watch this. Um, yep, Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 2, read verse 10. Start of verse 9. Read 9 and 10 together. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 9. Read. And when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. You see what he's saying? He's saying, the a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. The book, the, that roll is the book which is the Bible today. That's what is called collection of writings. Or you understand? Of the Israelites. Go ahead. And he spread it before me, and mm -hmm. it was written within and without. You see that this book was written within and without. Go ahead. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Lamentations and mourning and woe. The woe goes into what? The third woe that cometh quickly. Okay. That, that's also part of that. World War I, World War II, World War Three. The lamentation this morning is because what? That's the great tribulation that we would be in. Captivity. Okay, let's go back. Revelation 5 and 1. The book of Revelation 5 is 1. Read. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Read. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Who's gonna, who's gonna be worthy to open this book that is written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals? Who gonna do that? Go ahead. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Neither to understand what it's saying. Read. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. He says, There was no man that was found worthy, but watch this. Go ahead. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep mm -hmm. not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. And to loose the seven seals thereof. You see that thing? So the lion of the tribe of Judah, that's Christ. He will be the one that prevailed. He was the only one that was worthy to open up the understanding of this. That's why we are in the spirit of Christ, the spirit of prophecy. We can understand what the Bible is saying because Christ was the only one that was worthy to open the understanding to us. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Now watch this. Um, and once he opened that, you will what? You will put the spirit on the prophets to do so. Elijah being one of those prophets to be sent back in the last days before he returns. Okay? Now give me Matthew 20 verse 2. The book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 2. Before you get there, let me see something real quick. Okay. Hmm. I'm not dealing with the other sevens. Not yet. Not yet. This is going to go long. Okay, now give me, before we go there, before we go over there, when he said, well, I wanna, I'm going to give you another example of, they say that they would not come. Watch this. Give me Matthew 21, read verse 28. Okay, Matthew 21, 28. Because well, when he says they would not come, yes, he's, he's dealing with um, during the 60s when Israel was waking up, but the thing that had the bigger majority was what? the groups, the black groups that was that was rising up. That it also goes into what? The group that would now, they, they are prophesied that they are not going to repent, which is the two thirds of Israel. They are prophesied, that's why they said they will not come. But watch this. Give me Matthew 21 verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 21 verse 28. Read. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, son, Go work today in my vineyard. He says, go work today in my vineyard. So now, this is Christ speaking. So guess what? The servants will go out and bid the people to come to work, come to the wedding. 
Watch this, read. He answered and said, I will not. He says what? He answered and said, I will not. He says, he answered and said, I'm not coming to that. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to hear that Bible stuff. Go ahead. But afterward, he repented and went. But afterwards, when he got his mind right, when he realized, you know what? Let me get it together and let me go and work in the vineyard. Let me go and wake up my people. But he says, afterward, he repented and went. Watch this. Go ahead. And he came to the second and said likewise. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. He says, he says, the, the, you see, the first one says, I'm not going to go. But eventually got himself together and said, I'm going to repent and go and get this work done. You understand? Go ahead. The second one says, I'm going to go, but he never did. Read. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? He says, which of these two did the will of the father? Okay, come on. They say unto him, the first. Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. You see what he's saying? He says, because these are the people, he says, but what? Verily I say unto the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Why? Because these are the ones that got themselves right. They said they didn't want to come, but eventually they went. The publicans and the harlots, they eventually came in. You understand? You look, about, you look at the Samaritan woman, you look at um, you know, Martha and all that in Luke 8, you read about that, okay, as an example. Now, watch this. Give me Matthew 20, read verse 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 2. Remember, he hired the people. They said, no, we're not going to come. But guess what? Those that said they're not going to come, they eventually went. But those that said we're going to do it, they never came. Watch this. Matthew 20, verse 2. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, read he sent them the vineyard. Start verse 1. Read verse 1 down. The book, of, the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 1. Read. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. The, the, the man that is a householder is Christ. He's the householder. You understand? He's the one that owns the house. Which house? The house of Israel. Go ahead. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers and into his vineyard. You see that? To hire laborers unto his vineyards. Remember, Judah has been woken up. Judah understands, okay, I need to land. I need to go to the seas and wake up the people. There are those that will accept it. There are those that say that will say we we not we're not gonna come, but they eventually got, got the mind right and came. But there are those that say, hell to the no to hell with that. We don't want to hear that stuff. There are those that says yes, but they never did it. Okay, go ahead. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he mm -hmm. sent them into his vineyard. So when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into the vineyard. What is the penny? The penny is an example. That's what? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Get that in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 35. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 35. Go ahead. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. So the, that reward of the kingdom, what is that? That's the penny that we agreed to work for. That's the kingdom. Of heaven on earth. Okay, go back to Matthew 20, verse 2. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, Read. he sent them into his vineyard. Mm -hmm. Read. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So now he went the, he went in the third hour to he saw others. The people that are supposed to be bid to come to work or come to the wedding, what are they doing? They are still standing idle in the marketplace. You understand? Confused and lost in the source. Go ahead. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is right, I'm going to give you. Go ahead. And they went their way. They went their way. They said, we're going to get it done. Read. Again, 
he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. Read verse five again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse five. Mm -hmm. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. So now he says that he started with the third hour, he hired laborers into the vineyard. He went to the sixth and the ninth hour, he hired, us, he hired laborers into the vineyard, right? And it says he did likewise. Watch this. Go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Now, what we just read, that's Judah. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's, that's, what, that's us coming in now. Because why? Because of Zechariah 12, verse 7. But watch this now. Matthew 22, read verse 4. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying... Stop right here. What did he do? He sent forth other servants. He sent forth other servants. He sent forth other servants. Remember, he went the third hour. He went the sixth and the ninth hour. Now he's saying, I'm sending forth other servants. Remember, he sent the first servant, which is Judah. Now he's going to send forth other servants. Okay, go ahead. Say, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. You see that thing? Now watch this. Uh, when he says he sent forth other servants, give me the book uh, give me the book of Matthew 20, read verse 6 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And about the 11th hour, he went out. About the what? And about the 11th hour. About the 11th hour. The 11th hour, remember now, is there's one hour left. You understand? Is one hour left now. This is the 11th hour. Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 26. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and mm -hmm. said unto them, Pray. Why stand ye here all the day idle? Pray. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right. No, 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 that no, 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 no. no. There's something, there's a word you skip there. Read verse 7 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 7. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. No man has hired us, come on. He said unto them, mm -hmm. go ye also into the vineyard. You see what he's saying? What's... Go. He says, go ye also unto the, remember, this is the 11th hour. Go ye also unto the vineyard, come on. And whatsoever is right. That shall you receive. So whatsoever is right is going into what? The penny. But for you to get the penny, you must labor into this vineyard. Let's get that in, um, in Isaiah, okay? What the vineyard is. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah 5 and 7. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 and 7. Come on. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Read again. For the what? For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The vineyard is the house of Israel. You understand? So go back to Matthew now. Chapter 20, read verse 6. One more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said read. unto them, Come on. Why stand ye here all the day idle? Pray. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. Because no man has hired us, Ray. He said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So now watch this. Remember, this is the 11th hour. What is the Lord doing? Get that in John 10. Pay close attention. Go back to Matthew 22, read verse 4 again so we get it. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them what? which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. No, 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 no. Oxen, 
Wait, verse 4 again from the beginning, from the top. Read verse 4 again. Excuse me, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Great. Again, he sent forth other servants. Stop right there. What did he do? He sent forth other servants. He sent forth other servants. Hold that. Get John 10, 16. Let's see who's the other servants in the 11th hour that he sent, uh, he sent for. Watch this. John 10. Read verse 16. Of John chapter 10, verse 16. Come on. And other sheep I have, which and are what? not. And other sheep I have. You see that? And other sheep, and other sheep I have, go ahead. Which are not of this fold. Which are not of this fold. The, the, the fold he's talking about is talking about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, because he was from the tribe of Judah. This is Christ speaking. But he says, The other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Go ahead. Them also I must bring. He says, them also, they need to be brought. When? At the 11th hour. Okay, come on. And they shall hear my voice. Mm -hmm. And there shall be one fold. And one shepherd. They shall be one fold, meaning one nation, and one shepherd. Get that in Hosea 1 verse 11. The book of Hosea, chapter 1 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. The children and of Judah, the children of Judah and the children of Israel be what? Be gathered together. They are going to be gathered together. You understand? One fold. They are going to be gathered together. This is Judah and Israel now. All 12. Come on. And appoint themselves one head. That one head is one shepherd, which is Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Come on. And they shall come up out of the land. They shall come up out of the land with the chariots, right? For great shall be the day of Jezreel. The day of our deliverance will be great. So this other sheep that Christ is talking about, he's talking about the northern kingdom that will come in at the 11th hour. You understand? So that's what's going on. That's the other sheep, the other servants. Now go back to Matthew now. Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 22, read verse 4 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. Stop right there. He says, I prepared my dinner. When did he prepare the dinner? Go ahead. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. That part right there. He says, I prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. What is this talking about? The sacrifice that he had to make. And then over time, all 12 tribes will come together. That's what he's talking about. He's talking, when he says, my fatlings, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, what is he talking about? The sacrifice that he made. Go ahead. I'm going to explain that in a second. Come on. And all things are ready. Mm -hmm. Come into the marriage. Come unto the marriage. All things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Get that in Hebrews 10 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. You know what? Get Matthew 26. Something just jumped on me. Popped into my head. Let's get there. Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26. Read verse 17. Watch this. The book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 17. Read. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? That's the dinner. He prepared the dinner. That's the Passover. Go ahead. And he said, Go into the city to such a man and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. You see that? I'm going to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. Read. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. They made ready the Passover. Come on. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Yeah, when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Go ahead. Watch this. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, the one of you shall betray me. 
Now that's some heavy stuff. I'm not going to deal with that today. But the point is, he's preparing, he prepared the dinner. Okay. Watch this. Jump down to verse. Jump down to verse. They are having the dinner, right? They are having the dinner. Okay. Jump down to verse. Hmm. No, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. You know what? Jump. Read verse 26. Let me just read that. Let's just jump down to verse 26 because this is not part of my notes. So it just popped into my head. But make sure you write this down. Okay. Read verse 26. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. He says, take, eat. This is my body. Okay, take, eat. This is my body. Now, this, this is the Passover. The Passover meal, you understand that we would have. That's the dinner he prepared. But watch this. When he says, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, get Hebrews 10 and 1. Hebrews okay. chapter 10 and verse 1. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. The law, that's the law of animal sacrifice, it was a shadow of things to come. Come on. And not the very image of the things. Mm -hmm. Can never with those sacrifices. With those what? With those sacrifices. With those what? With those sacrifices. All that, go back to Matthew. Can never with those sacrifices. Matthew 22 verse 4 again. Book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Read. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. Because, you know, that's the other sheep. I prepared my dinner. Come on. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. You see that? My fatlings, my oxen and my fatlings are killed. That goes into sacrifice. Come on. And all things are ready. Mm -hmm. Come unto the marriage. Now let's go back to Hebrews 10. Read verse 1 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Read. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices, which they offered year by year, continually make the comers they unto perfect. Because you know what? The people that, our forefathers that brought the, 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 the animals and all of that, Guess what? He didn't make them perfect. He did not make them perfect. Why? Because they still did the same evils as is pertained to the conscience. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Mm -hmm. Because that the worshippers once purged should have, should have had no more conscience of sins. Right? But in those sacrifices, uh -huh. there, is a, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Read. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world... We're going to read down to verse 10. I need you to read quicker. Come on. He said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. But a body hast thou prepared me. That's the body of Christ. Read. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. A above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. The law of animal sacrifice. Sacrifice and offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not. The Lord says, I don't want that anymore. Come on. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may the establish covenant. the second. The second covenant under Christ. Read. By the which, by the which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You see that? By the which will, we are, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So guess what? Do you remember what Christ said? Christ said, listen, I prepared my what? I prepared my oxen and my fetlings. All things are ready. What does he mean all things are ready? Get John 19 verse 13. 
John 19, verse 30. That's what he means when he says, all things are ready. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 30. Mm -hmm. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is what? It is finished. It is what? It is finished. It is finished. When, so when, he, when, he, when he received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. What was finished? Him laying on the cross, dying for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why he said, what? All things are ready. Come unto the wedding. Meaning what? Southern kingdom, the Judah will wake up. You understand? And then in the 11th hour, Northern kingdom will wake up. When he says all things are ready, because why? He had to sacrifice himself for the 12 tribes of Israel so that in the last days, Judah will wake up. Judah will have the spirit to go to the seas and wake up the people. And in the 11th hour, Northern Kingdom will wake up. Because why? He prepared. He did the sacrifice. So we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice to bring all 12 tribes together. Bring Northern Kingdom back into the fold. Okay? Read that again, verse 30. Come on. The book of John chapter 19, verse 30. Read. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. That's when he died. Give me Ephesians 5 and 1 and 2. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. Read. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You see that? That's what that's why it says all things are ready. It is finished. Okay, go back to Matthew 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Come unto the marriage. Okay, read on. Verse 5. Come on. But they made light of it. They did what? But they made light of it. But they made light of it. They made light of it. Watch this. Give me that in Luke chapter 9, verse 58. They made light of it. Okay, read that. You know what? Finish, finish verse 5. Finish verse 5. Of Matthew chapter 22, verse 5. But they made light of it and went their ways. Mm -hmm. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. You see that? Now I'm busy. I don't want to hear that Bible stuff. That's what you hear now because that's where we at. That's where we at. I don't want to hear that Bible. They made light of it. They went their way and one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Give me that in Luke 9 58. Book of Mul the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 58. Read. Right. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said... No, no. Excuse me, sir. Luke 9, verse 58. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 58. Read. Right. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. Mm -hmm. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Because in the Christian church, they say Christ did not have a place to stay. You cannot make this stuff up. Because of what he was saying. He was traveling. That's why he said what he said. Okay, give me that in Matthew. Okay, because I think that's what it is. No, John 1. John 1. Yeah, that's the one. John chapter 1. Um, read verse... Yeah, John 1 verse 38. Watch this. Christ, Christ was not homeless. Okay. Read it. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 38. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto them, What seek ye? Mm -hmm. They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, mm -hmm. where goest thou? Where do you stay? Do you have a place to stay? Go ahead, watch this, read. He said unto them, Come and see. Come and see. Come and see where I live. Read. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. For it was about the 10th hour. Hmm. Okay, go back. Go back to Luke 9, verse 58. 
book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 58. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, that, said unto them, Foxes of holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Read. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. You see that? He's still concerned about, um, he's still worried about what's happening in the world. He's still concerned about his family members and things like that. He says, what? First go, he says, but he said, Lord, suffer me to first go and bury my father. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. You see that? Let the dead bury their dead. You follow me. Go ahead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You see that? Go do the work. Read. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell. You see that? Which let, me go first. let me go first and bid them farewell. Go ahead. Which are at home at my house. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You see what he's saying? He says, don't be double-minded. Because when you read in Matthew 4, it says they straightway left their nets and followed him. They didn't make no excuses. They did not make light of it. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in um, Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. Because we have a history of being distracted by, you know, dumb stuff. Deuteronomy 32, verse 15. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But Jeshurun was fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. You see what we did? When everything was good, we forgot the Lord. It says what? And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. We make light of it. We made light of it because we're in the midst of idolatry. Okay? Now go back. John 22. I mean, Matthew. Matthew chapter 22. Mm, I think I need to do part two of this. Um, Matthew chapter 22. Read verse, verse 5 again. The book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 5. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. You see that? Everybody just went, went, wanted to do their own thing. You understand? They didn't care about the truth. Right? And the remnant took his servants. A and remnant. The and the remnant took his servants. The one that came in the third, sixth, and ninth hour. And then those that also came in the eleventh hour. Those servants. He says what? Read verse six again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse six. Mm-hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You see that the remnant, the remnant, what the remnant here is the remnant of Israel. You understand? The remnant of Israel that will not want to keep God's commandments, they'll be offended. He says they took what? They took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You saw when it when we went to Shabville, they wanted to set us on fire. You understand? That's what they was doing. They wanted to, to put bullets in our heads. That's what they wanted to do. You understand? That's what we read in here. Okay? Get that in 2nd Ezra 1, verse 32. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 32. Mm -hmm. I sent unto you my servants, the prophets, whom ye have taken and slain. You see that? Whom ye have taken and slain, come on. And torn their bodies in pieces. Mm -hmm. Whose blood I will require of your hands, said the Lord. You see what he's saying? That's why he says, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. That's what we read in here. My servants, the prophets. Get that in Luke 13, verse 34. The book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 34. Come on. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets. And stones them that are sent unto thee. Mm -hmm. really? How often would I have gathered thy children together? As a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. 
You see that? So Jerusalem kills the prophets. That's the that's those the remnant that killed the prophets that was sent unto them to teach them. That's what you are seeing to us. You see what's happening to us today. You see what they, they want to do. They want to kill us. They want to set us on fire. They hate our guts. They they what? They they uh they 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 mess up our camp signs and all that. Yeah, that's what we're reading here. Okay. But it says they would not because they don't want to be gathered by Christ. They want to be gathered by Caesar Boje, which will never take place. They want to be gathered by Malema, Sel Ramaphosa, so on and so forth. They don't want to be gathered by our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Luke 19, verse 12. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. Mm -hmm. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. And to Wait. return. Mm -hmm. Come on. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. You see what he did? This is the what? This is the, the reward. Now, this is the understanding. He says he called his ten servants. You know what the ten servants? That's the ten virgins. Okay. As he delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Meaning what? Hold that. Give me that in Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, um, read verse, Revelation chapter 2, read verse 20, verse 25. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 25. Mm -hmm. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. You see that, occupy till I come. That which we have already, hold fast, hold it fast, protect it, learn it, apply it, teach it to your nation. Occupy till I come, meaning what? Do the work. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Um, let's go back. Luke 19. Read verse 14. The book of Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Read. But his citizens hated him. You see that? But his own people hated him. They also hate the prophets that come in the name of the Lord with the spirit of Christ to teach them. The same way they hated Christ, that's why they hate our guts. Read it again, verse 14. The book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 14. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. You see that? We don't want this man to rule, to rule over us. Why? John 19, verse 15. This is why they don't want this man to rule over them. Here's the proof. Read that. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 15. Go ahead. But they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Hmm. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify you, king? The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. You see that? We have no king but Caesar. So that's why it says, but his citizens, meaning his own countrymen, his own people, they hated the Messiah. The same way they hate us when we show up. When we show up, the people just get mad. Why? Because we come in to teach the gospel. We want to bring this, we bring in the scriptures out. They get mad. That's what we're reading here. Okay, go back. Matthew 22. The book of Luke. No, Matthew. Matthew 22, read verse 6 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 22, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. You see that? The remnant is our people that don't want to repent. Our people that hate correction, they hate accountability, they don't want to do what this Bible says. So instead of applying it, they hate our guts. That's what we're reading right there. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to do part two, Lord's Will, parable, Friday, Friday night, parable night. Lord's Will, I can continue in verse six, okay? So just, I can continue on on verse seven because there's a lot more going on here. All right, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, praise the Lord. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink the cup and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord an for that. All praise to the Lord.